Well, I'm at a small uh, truck stop in uh, Quebec and um, I don't have a load. I came down here uh, empty from. Uh, what the heck? Came down here empty from uh, Toronto, Ontario. Or rather, Cambridge. Right? And. There was supposed to be a load going to Texas, and it was a legal size, you know, not oversize, uh, only 42,000 pounds. And I said, okay. So we we changed the price a little bit because I said, you know, it's 360 miles empty, and they gave me uh, 300 bucks on top of what the load uh, paid uh, originally. And then this was Friday, and the guy didn't have time to send me the paperwork, so I waited till like only Sunday, Sunday morning. He finally sent me a load confirmation, and I started driving, but I didn't have any more. I didn't have all the information because this is an auction, like Richie Brothers, and uh, to pick up stuff at an auction, you need, you know, of course, you know, the machinery make and model, serial number, stuff like that, or at least a buyer number, like lot numbers, because it's a huge place, right? And took another two or three hours to finally get that info from the broker, and then I go in and I start looking for my stuff, and it's five pieces, and I find one, it's a scissor lift, and I cannot start it, it's dead. Then I find uh, three more, and they're just skids, small ones and they, they were going to use a uh, forklift to load them and then I went to look for, I knew there was a dozer D5 and if you saw a couple of my like videos I did uh, when I loaded in Baltimore, Baltimore, Maryland at the port uh, I had two D5 you know brand new dozers and I remember that they were not you know that big like the blade was uh, sticking out a little bit um, but this is a legal load, right? D5, I thought, hey, one dozer. And I find the dozer, and it's much bigger than those ones. Like, basically, it's a D6, just with uh, less horsepower. That's what one guy tried to explain to me. He says they call it D5, but actually, it's a body of a D6. And the tracks, you know, like, they're much taller in the back, and then they go down. So the, the height of the tracks in the front is uh, lower than in the back huge machine it's like I measured the height I thought it was uh, too big in 10 feet and then I measured the tracks like from one track from the outside of one track to the outside of the other track and it's 103 inches which is not good and then there's a blade even wider and I see that they disconnected the hydraulic cylinders but still there's a center pivot and they said no we're not gonna disconnect that if you want to disconnect that you have to you know, either do it yourself or call someone. And basically, it's a big job, so it's not just like a quick release thing. You know, like some uh, wheel loaders, they have that. So on this one, it's it's. Uh, and the guy says, "Well, but it's supposed to be legal, right?" Um, so I call the agent. The agent says, "No, it's legal." Then he puts me on a like conference call with the broker somewhere in Texas. Like there's two brokers, of course, right? And the guy says, 103 inches, it's legal. And even this guy, the agent, he used to be a trucker, he says, no, it's not. 103 inches, that's wider than uh, than the, even the rub rail on the trailer. Anyway, I said, forget it, I'm not doing it. Uh, because the, first of all, I would lose like two or three days waiting for permits. Because Ontario and Quebec are very slow, you know. And this guy says, uh, and they just wanted to add maybe a couple of hundred dollars for the for the hassle for the hustle and then just uh, or add uh, the cost of permits just not worth it you know like when you have an oversized load it's much more work and uh, you risk getting a ticket because you gotta go in into every open scale you cannot just bypass it and but the biggest thing was that what I didn't like is that this is a huge dozer and I didn't have anything to put under the tracks and the tracks were 
it's one of those LG like low ground pressure uh, machines so the tracks are very big and the the ribs you know I don't know what's the technical term is but you know on the track there's a rib that rib is like this big you know and I'm pretty sure that it would scratch the heck out of the floor you know and I'm trying to sell this trailer right so I said forget it you know so I basically just uh, ate the cost of fuel 360 miles but that's sometimes what happens, you know. Like that's why, of course, this lawn dead head. You have to be very careful. But the thing is, I worked with this guy before, and um, but uh, a lot of his loads, there's always some some problem, you know. But there's not that many agents that uh, you know have Canadian loads, and this guy used to be a trucker, but he's just like uh, he's not hundred percent into it, you know. Oh, I'm leaving soon, I gotta take my wife to the doctor, you know. Or, oh, I'm leaving soon, uh, I gotta do something. Uh, oh, and one more thing that why is this, uh, I would not be upset. Uh, uh, because, you know, there's, uh, tomorrow there'll be another load. Because, you know, as you, if you probably noticed uh, from my previous videos, like the situation in trucking, it can change like every hour. Now it totally broke, you have no money, and then uh, one week later you have like five grand in your bank account, you know. Uh, I'm not broke now and I don't have five grand because everything went to that low boy trailer, but one thing that I'm not happy about is that I bought a bike. Uh, like I posted a link to that website and I, I, uh, I checked the dimensions because I don't have much room in the truck and I wanted to get, uh, you know, a folding bike but with smaller wheels. And I found a model that doesn't take much space, and it's a citizen bike, the same make I use. It's I used to have a bike like that uh, three years ago, but I had a bigger one with the 20 inch wheels. Now I bought 16 inch wheels, folding bike, like really small, like perfect for for anyone who travels. You know, it doesn't have much space inside the vehicle. And I added a comfortable seat, and then I added a cable. Uh, like you know a couple of options like a cable to lock your pricey bike to some post or something and then I there was they had another option uh, you can add a little uh, kind of like a uh, bag uh, under this under the saddle like a little bag and it's kind of like, like long like this so you can put some documents in there maybe a bottle of water you know and it's the price is like amazing 226 bucks US even after uh, the shipping fee and because I knew that I would be going to Texas and I have to take this class in Indianapolis I, I knew that I'd be coming through Indianapolis and Lansta has a, a orientation center and that's where I can take this defensive driving course that uh, I'm required to take because of the ticket in Texas and they do it Wednesday and uh, Monday and I thought hey perfect you know I, I'm loading today Monday it's uh, 800 miles to Indianapolis. I'll be there Wednesday morning and I'll go take the class. And I found the FedEx uh, customer center right uh, close close by. And that's what I gave these guys. I said, uh, you know, send it to FedEx customer center. My name, you know, hold for pickup, stuff like that. And then uh, the, the bike company sends me a message saying that the bike will not ship until Wednesday. And I sent them an email. I said, "Well, Wednesday, I'm supposed to be in Indianapolis. So if you cannot make that bike appear in Indianapolis Wednesday, like unless I want to, you know, pay you extra, like for some overnight shipping or something, just ship it to Texas because I'm delivering a load to Texas." And I spent another some time on my computer trying to find the customer center close to the place where I'm unloading. And I found that one and I sent him another email said, okay, change the destination to uh, Hidalgo, Texas. <laughs> and I said, okay, here's your revised bill of lading, right? And now I drive here to this uh, Richie Brothers. I go to pick up my, uh, my dozer and it's too big. I have to cancel. And so I called the, the bike company again. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> But tax is not going to work either, and I explained that I'm a truck driver, you know. But that's what happens when you're a trucker and you try you're trying to buy something online and you're not sure about your where you're going to be. 
uh, and I cannot have it shipped to Canada to my home because I'll by the time it comes here I'll be in Texas somewhere right and they normally they, they give you like five days to sign for it and pick it up you know that's why I always try to have this stuff I buy online shipped to usually where I deliver because that usually works the best like in this case it would be Texas but now I had to call them and say okay put this on hold and they already charged my uh, my um, my credit card so the bike is mine except that it's still not ready it's gonna be ready by Wednesday and I said by that time I'll tell you uh, uh, where I want the, the bike shipped you know see one screw up from the agent uh, causes this chain reaction everything else is screwed up now but it's a small problem hopefully it will be fixed because I really look looking forward you know to uh, uh, putting in some exercising time and I was thinking of maybe joining a gym you know like there's a world gym and uh, that have branches all over the place uh, there's one in Cambridge and uh, Ontario and I, I see them in the States you know that would be great too like you pay one fee uh, I'm just thinking let's if they allow you to use the same like uh, name facility in the States that would be great but even if I have a bike uh, it would be a very good very good exercise you know I love bike when I was a kid I always was on my bike and I'm talking a regular bicycle, not a motorbike. Regular folding bike. It uh, weighs uh, 30 pounds and still has six gears. It's like a racing bike, you know, but small wheels, 16 inch. So, like the wheels are gonna be. Oh, yeah, okay. My steering wheel is 18. This is 18, right? And the wheels on this one are gonna be 60. So this is gonna be the wheel on this bike, but uh, the height, the, like the saddle, the the the, the handlebars, uh, the same as from the other bigger model. So they say it's still uh, is pretty good for uh, uh, for a rider is up to six feet tall and 220 pounds. So why not? You know? That's gonna be my next purchase, uh, and of course the. The trailer is coming end of Ju end of July, they said, and the truck is going to be ready. The guy said sometime in September, and now I added uh, that uh, Honda motor to the trailer. So because the trailer will be ready before the new truck, and on this one I have nothing. I have no wet line, no PTO. So they're going to put the Honda to operate the hydraulic. So this way I can use my old truck, this one, and drive to. South Carolina actually, not North Carolina, South Carolina where the plant is and pick up the trailer. So this was a quick update from uh, somewhere in Quebec, Canada. I'm Sergey Drachev, thanks for watching.